Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, TubeTech reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing a couple of their items and that is the their new guide scope and the 174M guide camera. Uh, they sent me both these items free of charge but I will be returning them. Um, I won't be keeping them. I did have the option of buying them. Um, so first of all, the guide, the guide scope itself which is here. Now this comes in a variety of different versions. This is the 250 millimeter version. They do a 200 millimeter version, which is just slightly shorter. They also do, they're, they're both models have got this Crayford focuser on the back, which is what I like the look of, but they do a standard Crayford focuser and they do a rack and pinion Crayford focuser. And this is the rack and pinion type, as you can see there. So it's the 250 model, 250 millimeter focal length model and the rack and pinion. So I tried this out and it works exactly as it should. It does as a guide scope, it's, it's absolutely fine. The thing is with guide scopes is it's a case of focusing them and then you, you don't really touch them again, do you? I mean, unless you're changing setups or something like that or changing guide cameras, you don't really uh, use them, you know, focus them again. So I like the idea of having a Crayford focuser. I just find them a bit more user friendly than the helical types. I, I much prefer these and that's why I wanted to have a look at this. Uh, my opinions on it are as a guide scope, the optics are absolutely fine. I certainly wouldn't use it for imaging with anything bigger than a, than a guide scope size chip. But it's a nice black anodized aluminium. Like I say, it's got the Crayford focuser on the back which is it's not the smoothest but it does the job it just runs on these four bearings that you can see here and they run inside a groove see if you can see the groove they just run inside that groove on the back and then you've just got a single speed single speed focuser on the bottom you've got quite a bit of focus do you see there around about 40 millimeters when it's fully out uh, which is which is good You've also got an M42 thread on the back as well as one two five inch eyepiece holder in the back as well. Now I do like the ring system. I do I, I don't like guide scope rings that have the three pins that you can adjust. I just don't think they're needed personally. I think a rigid fixed guide scope like this, piggybacked on top of your main scope, is far better than having the adjustable rings. I do think they're a little bit in my opinion a little bit out of date now and this and this is far better obviously you can move the scope up and down in these rings single screws to tighten them and then a dovetail there that will fit in a a finder type shoe bracket it's it's around 700 grams 800 grams in weight um, not too heavy at all like I say as a guide scope you might prefer the 200 millimeter version which is just shorter you can see that this is made up of sections and basically this section here is taken out uh, and then that creates the 200 millimeter version which is shorter which you might find a better option you've got a focus lock screw on the top which locks it solid um, the focus is a little bit lumpy it's not the greatest or smoothest but like I said before, it doesn't need to be on a guide scope, really. You know, it does the job. It does what it needs to do. So that's their new range of guide scopes. Like I said, there's two models, 250mm and a 200mm version. And the other thing they sent me was their 174M guide camera, which is this one. Now, obviously, ASI do a version of this, and it's quite pricey. It's obviously got a larger sensor than uh, than many other guide cameras that are used. Uh, and it's also got a, a large pixel size of, I think it's 5.6 microns. Um, uh, this would be much better in an off-axis guider because it's super sensitive, bigger chip and bigger pixels. In an off-axis guide, it'd be ideal. There's not a lot I can say about it. It is just their basic 125 millimeter sized uh, it is cheaper than the ASI version of this sensor. It has your normal ST4 port on the back and it's also got a USB-C port which is USB 2 
because as a guide scope that's all you need is USB 2 you don't need a fast USB 3 I think they do do a model of this with the USB 3 um, but this is you know being sold as a guide camera so um, those big pixels like I say are perfect for use in an off-axis guider I might give this a try in an off-axis guider on my SCT because I think it might work even better in that but it's a very good option if you don't want to pay the prices that ASI are asking because this is quite a lot cheaper so it, it is worth looking at if you are in the market for this 174M camera to use as a guide camera so again as usual I hope you found that useful please consider liking and subscribing so thank you very much for watching um, and I'll see you in the next video